everyone. Hey guys. <laughs> okay, so we're back in the car. Surprise, surprise. We've been back in the car. We just turned y'all on. Yeah, that's true. We have been back in the car. We're halfway we stay, there. We stay in the car. Okay, so we were having a discussion, and this was another situation to where Chris was like, just turn your phone on and record. Hit record. And and I'm not there yet. I can't do that yet. You know, it's a little different when you're just, you just, you know, are having a discussion, and all of a sudden something comes up, and and when you just hit record for your whole life to be recorded, it seems like. So... Maybe, maybe that'll happen soon, but I'm not there yet. It's okay. So, this was one of those situations. We were in a discussion. We were talking, and we started talking about pretty much the gist was, and he just actually came up with this title that was perfect. It's very fitting. Um, how to be spiritual in a physical world. With, of in course, marriage. of course, with regards to your marriage. So that was kind of um, that was kind of the gist of what we were talking about the other day. How you know you have all these physical feelings. You you have physical it, most of the time. Not that it should be this way, but most of the time you get married um, due to the physical. You find them attractive. Um, well, not that that should be that way, but that usually happens. And then. You know, a lot of things, of course, things in your marriage are physical, and you have jealousy, you have all of these things surrounding your your feelings on a physical level, and we were talking about the struggles that women go through in particular, because I know that men go through a lot of struggles too, but it seems to be that women go through more of these as far as how, how they look, how they should look. How they the the thoughts in their head of is does their husband still find them attractive? Um, does he still um, you know view them the same way? As far as you know, after kids and after you know, um, I mean I you know I can remember a time to where I was barefoot and pregnant, so to speak. <laughs> you know, to where it's like you know that's that's not very you know you you talk about you know how that's not. It's not very attractive, but it is attractive. It should be attractive. It should be attractive to your spouse. It was very much attractive because to they, me. because you know, I did that. Well, the same. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it should be attractive. I know, but th that's a whole other thing. There's men out there that do not that that give women a hard time in that in that area. But that was the whole point. We were talking about the fact how of how men make some things that they do and how they could change their actions in just a few areas they could make women feel better and help women not have to go through the mental turmoil that they go through because a lot of us women do go through a lot of mental turmoil as far as just the thoughts in your head that end up lingering around and and cause you cause you the pain and the anguish so um that's kind of that's kind of what we started with and we were just like you know if we thought about the spiritual, if all this is spiritual, you know, and then I said, I think I said, I don't know how when this came up, but I said, if we just looked at it as, um, what did I say, dirt and, I have done forgot again. We're just going back to D dust anyway. Dust, dirt and dust. I said, you know, if we're just, we're just going back to dirt and dust anyway. So... It's, it's like we get hung up on the physical. Which is temporal. Which is temporal, and we don't think about the spiritual. So I mean, that's even where... Even at its best, even at its best, the physical is temporal. We have seasons, we see beauty, and then we see cold and decay. Every year that we see this green beauty that's all around us turns brown and is laying on the ground in decay by the end of the year. So at best... Nature presents it as very temporal. Mm -hmm. And then we as humans get caught up in this temporal, physical ideology to where we can't focus on the spiritual or the relational or the sensitive, you know, and all these things that are necessary for us to exist albeit in a physical world, we're spiritual beings. We're not just physical beings. If 
if we were just physical beings, we would not have the abilities that we have internally. I mean, there's, there's lots of other physical beings that don't have what we have. So obviously we are something higher than just a physical concoction of chemicals and elements and, and mineral deposits and water. There's so much more to us than that. Yeah. Go ahead. Pick back up where, where you are. I was just, I wanted to no, go in that I was temporal ready, part. I was ready for you to, to take over, say a few thoughts. Um, I won't take over. <laughs> well, it, it's just... It's just, it's hard. I, I'm gonna, it's I'm just hard. gonna say, it's a, it's a struggle to separate the two and to be physical. And I'm not saying you have to separate because you can't separate. You really can't. You can't separate the two as far as you have. You're physical. You're in a physical world. You have a physical body. You have physical appetites. Physical appetites, but then, but then you, you want to put the spiritual side over the physical, and sometimes that's we, we, we just. Um, we focus on the physical a lot more than the than the spiritual. Because it's easier. I mean, it's easier. We get up every day and we look in a mirror. We get up every day and we wash our behinds. We get up every day and we do these things because it's you have to. I mean, yeah. it's part of everyday life. So for for us as humans, it's it's almost a demanded necessity that you deal with the physical. But sometimes, but so oftentimes we neglect the emotional, spiritual side of life. And don't you think sometimes, though, if we could figure out how to deal with the or, or to focus on the spiritual more, that we would be happier people? Oh, most definitely. And not it changes you know, it changes you who you who you are because the physical is laden with pain and problems and ailments and afflictions. And then, like with the, you know, with the men um, toward even you know, like husbands. I'm talking about husbands toward their wives. Um, you know, I'm not talking about some stranger. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not start talking about some stranger out on the street. I'm talking about husbands toward their wives. Husbands that you know are supposed to love and adore and cherish and all of those other things to their wife. I'm talking about how those those men make their wives feel. And I don't think sometimes they realize. How they well, make their wives feel. I didn't realize it when I was making you feel that way. I really thought I was doing the best I could, and now I realize the one thing that you read a quote this morning that I thought was powerful. It said, "Some years ask questions, some years give answers." And I that thought, was deep. "Wow, is that not the best quote we've ever heard?" Sometimes when I thought I was doing the best I could and I look back on it now, I'm like, you were a moron. I had absolutely no clue what was even expected of me, so how could I think I was doing the best I could? Because I was yeah. I was lost in oblivion. I had no clue. So for, for me, growing and learning and maturing has been a powerful rear view mirror. Because then I look back over the life and I'm like, man, you just didn't do it right. You just didn't do it justice. You just didn't do your part. And now that we are where we are, and hopefully you are headed to a better place, the more you will mature in mind spiritually, the more the physical is put in its place. And I think that's how God designed it. The more you mature spiritually, the more your physical junk, whatever it is, whether it's pain, whether it's anguish, whether it's ego, whether it's you know the, the momentary pleasures of life, whatever they are, they're put in their place. And let's just be honest, I mean, and this is, in this area, it just seems to hit women more than men because, let's well, be honest. it's men's fault, though? It is men, I, I believe it's the man's fault. But let's be honest, you know, remember the, what is the, with the dad bod, the dad bod came into um, into into. When did the dad bod? Yeah. Okay. Are you looking at me like why are you no, saying this on video? I've got a couple certificates in that. No. I'm like, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? I, thought, I was like, uh oh. I thought you were supposed to get all ooey gooey because like I'm sitting beside you with a dad bod. Oh me. No. I I'm, probably got a grandpa bod by this point. I'm old enough to be a grandpa, even though I'm not. I'm saying like that that was that was the the it thing or whatever and everybody like had this craze about it. 
But then that's not how... Can you think of the man that then, instituted that? But, but then that's... He's like, <laughs> this is a dad bod. And everybody went crazy. And he was like, it works. Yeah. I mean, it worked anyway, though. Let's be honest. It was working anyway. Because, but then you turn around on the, on the you know, woman's side of it. And, you know, there's an expectation. And that's why there's young girls. Whole other issue. It's but that's really why there's young other. girls that are that are committing suicide. That's why... There's their own their own these social media sites getting um, cyber bullied and everything else and not feeling good enough and women do not feel good enough and this this was we talked about that women that's kind of you know women don't feel good enough because um, and I feel that that men are to blame mostly to blame for that I I'm really sure do they are. I mean I'm sure there's going to be some if maybe women, maybe this will cause somebody to comment and actually disagree with us. At this point, I really wouldn't care if somebody well, commented. We got plenty of stuff in the arsenal to get point, people to disagree with. At this point, I really wouldn't care if anybody disagreed with us. If they would just comment, you know? Like, subscribe to the channel and comment. I don't even care if you're disagreeing. Anyway, I just had to throw that in there. But, I agree. You know, if you don't agree, tell me that you don't agree. But I think that it's mostly the man's fault. Why please do you think it's mostly the man's fault? Hold on. Before we get to that, please address all comments and concerns to Kelly. Yes. At go right ahead. Com. Go right ahead. So why do you think that since you're a man and they're listening to you and you're a man, yeah. why do you think that Because men are stupid. That it's what do you think men could do different to make well, that one, not man the number one thing we should do is mature spiritually. I've already said that. Okay. Because if you'll mature spiritually, like the Proverbs that deal with the father trying to instruct his son not to walk in the ways of certain women. There's certain women out there that are doing what they're doing on purpose. They are trying to lure a man into their web. They're trying to lure a man into a sex trap, into a I dress this way trap, or I talk to you this way trap, or I flirt with you occasionally trap. They're trying to lure the man into the trap. Well, what feeds that trap? What even enables the man to be pulled away? His own lusts. So he's lusting after dirt and dust. He's actually lusting after something that when this temporary thing is over, whatever it is, however long we get to exist here, in, in our fleshly bodies of life, he's using his dirt and dust to just simply lust after somebody else's dirt and dust, and their soul will continue on, and so will his. And then when you look back, when we talk about looking back, there's not a person out there that's listening to this video that can't look back over his life and go, man, I shouldn't have done that. I wished I would have done this. I could have done this differently. There's a thousand ways we can say that comment. And every one of us can look back at mistakes we've made and say, if I would have only known then what I know now, I wouldn't have been a bonehead. I wouldn't have made that mistake. I wouldn't have hurt my wife. I wouldn't have said this to that woman or got myself into this trouble or that. I wouldn't have picked up this device and, and contacted somebody. It is absolutely ridiculous that we can't see past the end of our nose. Because that's spiritual immaturity. We don't even realize that so what many was that? people... What was that hesitation? Uh, that, that's me, that's me <laughs> calming down. Was it, were you getting in preacher mode? No, I wasn't getting in preacher mode. I was getting in flustered mode. Oh, okay. We need to understand that that person that's doing that doesn't understand the long haul. He can't uh, understand yeah. it, or else he's choosing to ignore it or rebel against it. Because when you understand that even the fleshly desires you will regret, even if you are a worldly mind, you still, worldly people still regret acting worldly. You don't even have to mature spiritually to regret. And there's so many people out there who are regretting because they can't have a relationship, they don't know how to work on themselves, they don't know how to spend time actually caring and being concerned for someone else, and because of all of that, they just live for the fleshly desire of me. Well, I mean, realistically, what what is there to life if you don't have relationships? And I know there's why in that in that scenario, I know there's. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to say that's just <clears throat> that's just the man. 
I think that that's also, you know, the woman can feel that way too, can be that sure. way too, and let her, you know, be all about the, the physical and fleshly desires and things like that. I'm not trying to put that all in the man. I guess maybe my question to you was more. Let me I let me answer it this time how you ask it, since I went on that little rant. No, that was that was good and that was great. But let I let me listen better. I didn't. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to put it, make it sound like that. You know, we all that men. was men because women do that too. But sure, what I was do. meaning in the marriage, as far as with physical and not thinking about the physical and spiritual, because or de- separating the physical and spiritual, because women tend to deal with more of feeling. Um, not good enough um, physically, and that's just society. Yeah. Um, well, doing that to them. So what is what I meant is what is could husbands do if if they have a wife that because of whatever, because of childbirth, because of um, genetics, because of whatever, they they don't feel good enough. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to say a certain size or anything. I'm not saying this this is this is across the board. Could be any size, any looks, any anything. If for whatever reason they don't feel good enough, what could the husband do to make their make her feel better? All right, now that was kind of my question. Okay, well I totally missed that. Yeah, but all that was good though, and that that related. I'm just. What can you do mm-hmm. to make a woman who doesn't feel adequate or feel good about herself to feel better about herself? Even though he thinks she's that, if if he doesn't think she's he needs she's to adequate, be her man. If he doesn't think she's adequate, that's a whole nother video toward toward that man. Yeah, if he maybe, doesn't think maybe she's a one-on-one adequate, one yeah, video then, with then that's a problem. So <laughs> you're saying he, if he admires she her, is, she doesn't. Yes. but she doesn't view herself this way. Yes. Okay. What can he do to help He needs that? to be her man. He needs to know her well enough to know that when she's struggling with this, that it's a real struggle. It's not just something you can say, come on, babe, you know you're good looking, and move on. And I'm, ha- I'm really... I'm really having to monitor myself sometimes because when we have these conversations at home, I might say things that I ain't saying on this video. But this is also like, this could be from a 20-year-old all the way to an 80-year-old. Look, a couple at church the other day, a man said, a man that made the comment, he sees his wife to this day just like he saw her when they were dating years ago. Well, that's... And that was the sweetest thing I've ever heard in my life. That was so sweet. So, because he because he still loves her the same way, well, he, and in his eyes, he sees her the do same. Do you see me age? So, no. I don't see you age. No, we say all the time, like, how many times do, do you say, yeah, there's your, that 15-year-old yeah, girl? Yeah, now I do see periods of I don't mean I time. like a 15-year-old girl. I'm no, saying you don't like look we, like a 15-year-old girl. You look like a very mature, my kind of woman. That's what you look like. Oh, but, no, I'm saying, like, we, we see flashbacks yeah we saying. see we see little glimpses of each other at different stages of our life like sometimes i see her as the old grandma sitting on the porch saying come on young it's just time to get you snacks i see all kinds of things the majority of the time uh, yeah well more <laughs> lately more lately <laughs> when she's like i'm tired I'm like, no you ain't come on you got to go. Or when I'm saying I'm tired, she's like, well, it's because you push yourself too hard and you can't, you're getting old, Chris. She has to remind me that I'm getting old sometimes. <sighs> sometimes I just, you know, can't handle it. But we're getting old. He needs to be her man. He needs to see her with no age. He, sees, he needs to see her with no changes. And when changes do come up, he needs to accommodate them. Because we're all, we're going to change. We're all going to get we're older. We're all getting older. All of us. The I mean, people who are watching that. these videos can relate to this. If you're 20 years old and you're watching this video and you think you're invincible, write yourself a letter. Open it when you get to about 45, 48 years old, when you got glasses, gray hair, when you have to wear a belt to hold your britches up. All this kind of stuff, you will get older. We live in a world where people disdain age. We, we mock the old. We ridicule we the young. To we, look yeah, we, we go and we do all kinds of modifications to our bodies to try to stay young. You know, we have gyms about every three miles. It, just on our ride, and we live we live out in the country. We're driving down country roads. Just on our drive, there are several out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a, a big metal building weight equipment and gyms because we're so fixated on the physical. Now, I'm not saying that it's a bad idea to stay healthy. I'm not saying that at all. As a matter of fact, we would promote you to be healthy and take care of yourself and quit eating garbage all the time and exercise your body and mentally exercise your mind and and stay fit 
for the kingdom. But there are some things that we need to understand that this world is so fixated on age that we push you into a category. Well, when you're married, I promise you, the people that have, that we go to church with have been married 60 plus years, they don't see age until there's a limitation, until there's a hindrance that keeps them from doing what they used to do. Then, of course, age is, it, it has to be faced. But other than that, they don't, they don't age with each other. No, but I think as they get older, they, they see more. They're, they're able to see more of the, vis- the sure. spiritual. The spiritual That's my than, point. Than, yeah. The more spiritually you mature, the less the physical has an effect on you. Yeah, that's so and, true. And I think that applies at, at any age bracket that you might find yourself in. But the closer to the end of life you go, the more spiritual you are. Even if you're not in a spiritual relationship with God and through Christ and had your life changed by the words of Christ, even if you haven't been there, you're still more spiritually minded because the physical is waning. And it's going downhill, and you know you're getting close to the end. We you're going to start thinking about spiritual for sure. I'm, I'm already starting to think about it. I'm like, where's heaven at? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I want to lean into it. I don't. I don't want to run from heaven. I want to lean into heaven because that that's the only hope we have mm-hmm. is to do the right thing the right way, and that's His way. That's not our way. As a matter of fact, I think that's a, a principle, a proverb, a, a parable, if you will. Of all the things in life, if you will figure out, the more you allow your relationships to govern and, and, and help you conduct your behavior, the better your life is actually going to be. If you're just an old grump and a, and a gruff and a cuss about everything, you're going to be by yourself. You're just not going to have any great relationships. And the great relationships that you think you have, on the other side of that relationship, they don't think it's so great. And I think with the with with the spiritual and the physical talking about all that, I think that if you just like we said in another video before, um, if you when you had a fight or an argument, you thought, "What what is this going to be in ten years?" Well, what if you have the same art? This is this has been something that's motivated me that even going forward with things um, that to actually think when a, when an argument or something comes up or you know a disagreement or a thought in your head or anything. Okay, is this, you know, yes, we have to, we're in a physical world. Yes, we have to focus on the physical. But is this a phys- something physical that should take time out of my day and affect us in our relationship? Or should I, should I focus on the spiritual in this moment? You know, it's like one of those questions to ask yourself. If you can stop yourself and ask that question, I can guarantee you what the answer is going to be nine times out of ten. Yeah. But usually we don't listen. Like everything else, we, we ignore that and go on with our how we're feeling at the moment because, you know, those feelings are strong. Whatever it but is, But as we're long feeling. as self is what's governing you and not the spirit, not the things that need to govern you eternally, as long as you're the one governing your actions, you're always going to side for yourself. Who in the world is going to walk out into this world and say, I'm going to give up my rights for the day? If they're not spiritually minded, no, nobody. nobody. But spiritually, we're we and that's why our country's in the trouble it's in yeah. because everybody that's out there pushing an agenda, trying to subdue people, trying to brainwash them, whatever's going on as the propaganda. By the way, propaganda is legal in our country again. Look that up. There's all kinds of propaganda coming at us to be something, anything, but spiritual. We don't want people to be spiritual. Because if people are spiritual, their marriages will get better. Their homes will get better. Their jobs will get better. Their relationships in the church will get better. Their relationships with their neighbors will get better. The more spiritual we become, the better, the closer, the more knit together we are. And that's why that's why the country's like it is. That's why during all these COVID protests. They had stacks of bricks on every block in some of these cities because they wanted the people who are not spiritually minded to walk by and pick up a brick. Well, let me ask you a question. What's the difference in them, in these riots, and in these moments of anarchy, picking up a brick? What's the difference in you picking it up in your home? No difference. Are you picking up a brick in your home ready to throw it? Or are you trying to pick that brick up to lay it in the foundation and mortar it in so that it can't come out again? 
There were places in this country that had pallets of bricks in front of buildings waiting for rioters or looters to come in and grab those bricks and throw them. You got those same bricks inside your house. You can weaponize them if you want to. Every one of us has a past. Every one of us has flaws in our life. Every one of us has some kind of trauma that you can pick up at any given moment and throw it through the window of your spouse's life. You can. But are you going to use that to destroy your home or are you going to use that to help build a better home? I think that's really where we are. And it starts inside. It starts inside. It starts with less physical, more spiritual. And we men are physical people. We have physical appetites. Give us a T-bone steak and a baked potato and watch us go to town. We love to eat. We love to do sporting events and exercise our bodies and go out into the wild blue yonder and be nature's people. We love the physical. Let me tell you something else we love. The physical. We love a physical sexual appetite. Wow. We do. It's part of us. God made us that way. But in everything that God made you, He gave you the ability to regulate it. He gave you an appetite for food. But you're supposed to regulate it. He also gave you a sense of survival but he expects you to regulate it. He doesn't expect you to go out there and be an amoral person just because you need something in your life today to survive. And just like he gave you those two regulations on two of the best drives we have, there's a third drive that we have, and that's the sex drive. And I'm going to tell you, it is a strong one. But we're still supposed to regulate it. I thought the first one was the sex Hunger, drive. survival, and sex. Oh. Okay, I'm Hunger it. means I can survive today. Survival means I can survive till tomorrow. And sex means I'm going to have somebody to live after me after that. All right, so in essence, here's a challenge for us. Why don't we challenge ourselves to be more spiritual? Instead of when you have a physical desire, you acting on that physical desire or that physical... or that physical... Um, instinct, why don't you try to apply some spiritual learning or spiritual patience to your life? Try to fight the flesh. And with that, we'll sign off for this one. Bye. Bye.